Good. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Xenopus development. And what's really important about Xenopus development is that it, um, it's very different from human development. Um, Xenopus development is a determinative style of devel development. And what that means is there's a uh, yolk inside the egg. And that yolk has a lot of different uh, molecules, and those molecules, as the, the egg gets um, divided, those molecules get segregated to different cells, and if that cell retains that molecule, then it will become a different type of cell, and we'll, we'll see that later um, with the new Coop Center and those determinants there. Um, and then the other, uh, what we saw in mammals are, uh, or is regulative development. That is, it's like we have that one uh, cell and there's no yolk. And what happens is as the cell divides, the, the different cells talk to each other. And it's kind of like one cell ends up deciding that it wants to be this thing. And it tells other cells like, hey, don't be this thing because I'm already it. So they're like, oh, all right, well, okay, we'll become something else then. Um, so that's like characteristic of mammals. And then the, the one final type of development is invariant. And what invariant development is, is it's characteristic of C. elegans. And uh, so what that means is like, um, especially in C. elegans, it has... Uh, 566 cells. Yeah, that well, what's the, the same. they divide um, not equally. Yeah, um, asymmetrically. Asymmetric, yeah. So when the C. elegans first divides, it has an asymmetric division, and it like further asymmetrically divides, and that uh, ends up like they they did these uh, fate mapping experiments, and what happened is that they like removed one of those asymmetric cells, something was missing, and like you could do that over like a whole lot of gener or uh, yeah a lot of the different uh, organisms of C. elegans and like each time they removed that one cell that same thing was missing so that's a very uh, development, it doesn't change over each uh, new organism okay so for Xenopus development when the sperm eats the egg there's this event called cortical rotation and what happens is at the bottom or at the, the vegetal dorsal um, region of the egg has these granules called uh, nucoop or well these cortical granules that um, no just these things that become or are the nucoop center and what happens is uh, the cortex rotates when the sperm meets the egg and what that does is it moves these granules over here and it forms this thing called the Great Crescent and uh, that region of the Great Crescent becomes what's known as the spemen organizer and that's very important for gas relation which we'll talk about next but um, so what this is like a rough outline of the different or of like the general fate maps fate mapping of Xenopus. Um, this region up here generally goes for ectoderm ectodermal tissue. This goes for mesodermal tissue, and this goes to endodermal tissue. And what that basically means is this is the gut, this is like um, bones and the heart and stuff like that, and this is like skin and other things like that. Oh, yeah, this is muscle. Um, so, yeah, sperm meets egg, and what happens is the point of sperm entry defines the ventral axis, and then whatever is opposite of the point of sperm entry is the dorsal side. And what happens is when, they, when the sperm meets the egg, there's a rotation, and then the first cell division. So it, it divides the cell into two and that's along the ventral dorsal axis and then it divides it a second time and that's what's this axis um what's the horizontal axis doing the horizontal axis yeah animal vegetal ventral dorsal 
Um, uh, I can look it up. Hold on. Yeah, whatever, screw it. It doesn't matter. It's the... Anterior posterior? Anterior posterior. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe I got that. <laughs> Anterior posterior. Um, so, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, and then beyond that, we really, like, it just keeps dividing from there. And it um, becomes a blastivore. Yeah. And then eventually it forms this thing called the blastivore, which is like a, a nucleophilic center. Oh, the blastic hole. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, that's uh, gas relation, right? I thought the blastocol was the liquid-filled cavity inside the blastopore, which is just a ball of cells. Yeah, yeah. Or a blastocyst. Oh, okay. Yeah. Blastocyst is the ball of cells. Yeah, so this is after it divides a whole bunch of times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's a blastocyst. Blastocyst, yeah. And then there's, um, like, a, a bunch of liquid in the center, and it kind of, it's like a cavity. And then what happens is, if you imagine you have this ball, and you like push in on one side of the ball, that's what gastrulation is. Mm -hmm. And so it creates another cavity on the inside. Um, and the point where gastrulation first occurs is at the sputum organizer. And if you remember from a couple seconds ago, the sputum organizer is what comes from the new poop center. Mm -hmm. so, the nucleus center induces the sputum organizer. Yeah, the the things at the nucleus center that get moved to the sputum or what becomes the sputum organizer induce the gas relation. So there's some necessary determinant analogy that I don't want to mix up right now. So I'm not gonna, but yeah. So then these go inside there, and it forms, uh, or it's gas related, whatever. And then you have like this cavity in here, and then after gas relation you have um, neurulation, mm -hmm. and what that is is the process of forming the noto cord, or no, the noto uh, neural tube, mm -hmm. and that's really important for later for when you want to have you know your neural stuff going on. So once you have the gastrol cavity and everything in there. Uh, these different pathways start happening. Um, there's this a bunch of tissue called the notochord, and that comes from the mesodermal tissue that was over here. So everything that was over here before, when it gets gas-related, it actually creates this region over here called the notochord. And so then there's a bunch of interactions with different uh, molecules. And what's really important are the TGF beta and cordon interactions, and then later on the zooloid and how it reduces cordon. So what happens is, um, well, let me first talk about TGF beta. Um, TGF beta is a class of ligands, and they um, induce transcription for a lot of things. Uh, what happens is the TGF beta ligand binds to the TGF beta receptor and the TGF beta receptor is made up of two subunits and what happens is the second subunit phosphorylates the first subunit or yeah 